Hey guys, it's John P with Geek Beat TV, and today we have a very special guest, and we're gonna be talking about the, probably the world's most innovative camera application, VisiWig. This episode of Geek Beat TV is brought to you by Carbonite. Okay guys, I'm really excited because once again, we have Michael from i4 Software joining us. They are the guys who invented VisiWig. I think it is the most amazing, I don't even know what to call it, app, video, camera, app. It's just, it does everything. Welcome Michael, thanks for joining me again. Thank you John, it's always a pleasure. I, I know that uh, when we were at Macworld in 2012 for the official launch, uh, I think Callie was the first one that came to interview us, and uh, she had been looking for it actually. So she had heard about it through a through a, a confidential press release we sent out to to some of the people who were going to be attending, and uh, that was version 1.0. So here we are at 4.0. And I can't believe it was in 2012. <laughs> well, you know how fast this business moves, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like four years ago, but uh, you got to keep coming out with upgrades and add features that users ask for, and that's what we keep doing. Well, so for the people who haven't seen our previous coverage, we've covered VisiWig in a number of its iterations over the last you know year and a half or so. And I would say that when it first came out, it was already the best video recorder app ever made for iOS. And even if nothing had changed, it would still be the best today. However, you guys are not just sitting around doing nothing. You continue to add new features and functionality. And one of the things I'm most excited about, and I think we're gonna try it out, is this new remote camera feature where I can take feeds from people anywhere in the world. Is that true? Yeah, we're calling it Worldwide Remote Camera. And we, uh, we've been working on it actually since last year. Um, the only complaint that people have about our remote camera product now is that it requires Wi-Fi. Or I, should, I shouldn't say now because we've already, we've already solved the problem. But the previous remote camera solution required Wi-Fi. And so you could connect up to 16 iOS devices, um, uh, but you, you, know, you had to have Wi-Fi. So I would typically take a Wi-Fi hotspot with me. Uh, maybe like a MiFi or something if I was going to be out and about, but that's not a really great solution for most people. So what we wanted to do is remove that barrier, not just for being able to connect to your friends worldwide in real time, but even just if you're out in the, you know, out and about in the city and you you and your friend both just have, you know, LTE or 4G, you might want to do a remote camera session real quick. And so worldwide remote camera solves that problem as well. Before we get into demonstrating how that works, how about if we just, let's, let's just show some of the basic video camera functionality because if somebody was looking to be able to shoot video on an iPad, an iPhone, basically any kind of iOS device, um, this app will do everything you need just as a video camera. And then we get into this whole multi-camera thing, whether it's locally or remotely. So let's talk about the interface a little bit. I've got an iPad mini sitting here. Um, I happen to have mine currently mounted in this cool little case. It's called an iographer. I'll turn it around here so you can see that's what it is. And I believe Dave is getting a feed coming straight out of the mini. True, Dave? There it is. All right, so maybe you can talk me through a little bit of what I'm seeing on the screen and show me just a few of the basic functions that I can do. Sure, so you know what's, what started our approach to VisiWig, once somebody told me the, the best game on the iOS platform is a game that is easy to pick up and play with, but almost impossible to master. And we wanted to do the same thing with a video editing app. We want it to be simple enough for a beginner, but powerful enough for a professional. 
what we what we realized was that you could make a simple video out that sort of mashes a set of clips together and creates a video real fast. But we knew that people would get bored of that, just like they get bored with a really easy game. We knew that after people make about three or four simple videos, they start asking for more control. After they make about 10 videos, they want more control. After people make about 50 videos, they want om omnipowerful ultimate control of every single thing they could possibly imagine. So we get these emails from users saying, hey, I just made my first video. And then six months later, you know, hey, how can I do a B-roll insert or something like that, right? So Well, uh, I've noticed that when I use it, every time I pick it up, I discover new things about it. So that's, that's you know, your plan is working for sure. So when you first launch it, the, the thing that differentiates uh, VisiWig from any other video editing app is it's first and foremost a video camera, right? It's, it's just like your native camera you might launch and shoot a video. And we want it to be immediate. When you launch the app, you're taking a video. When you launch uh, you know, something like iMovie, for example, you're presented with a project screen. You either start a new project or select an existing project. Then you get into your project, you might have to click an add media button. After about 20 or 30 seconds, then you can actually shoot a clip. And we wanted to be able to make sure you could shoot a clip immediately. Uh, the, the other thing is that we didn't want to make you have to capture a bunch of clips and then go edit them all later. Um, so what a lot of people do is they use their native camera, they shoot 10 or 15 clips of an event, and they tell themselves, I'm going to edit this all together later. But you never do. Yeah. You never take the time. So we wanted to make, make it possible and easy to edit while you're shooting. Uh, make it possible and easy to move clips around in your little timeline. So we have this on-screen timeline, which if you demonstrate it with your iPad mini there, you'll see the moment you tap the record button, and then once you hit stop, it's going to ask you, go ahead. So now, now hit stop. It's going to say, would you like to export this clip or build a movie? Okay. Because a lot of people use VisiWig just to record one single clip. They can use our zoom controls. They can take snapshots while they're recording. So they, they get a little better experience than the native camera, which doesn't allow the zooming, doesn't allow you to overlay snapshots. And then they can just export that right to the camera roll. They don't have to actually create a project for that. So right now, I just hit record for three seconds. And if that was it, I just wanted to like, yeah, so I, took a, a, I took a video of my niece and I want to send it to my mom. I hit yeah. export clip. Yeah, do that. Hit export clip, actually. Okay, I hit export clip. Oh, permission needed. Uh, okay, fine. I'll give you some permission. Would like to access my photos. Okay, do it. And that's it. It's done. Well, and not only is it done, but you can actually use our full sharing features there. So share to Facebook, share to Vimeo, email. I could uh, upload to YouTube right now. Upload to YouTube right now. Okay. And and uh, and, and also for email, if let's say you had just shot a ten minute clip, you could still email that because we would compress it down and scale it down. Oh, okay. So now go ahead and record again, and this time uh, we're going to say build movie. I'll just pan a little bit here for grins, and then I'll come on back. Maybe use the smooth zoom even. Okay, the smooth well, zoom. Ah. That'd be crazy. I mean, why not? You know, yeah. Got okay. Now we'll <laughs> stop. All stop right. Stop say, I want to build a movie. Okay, I'm going to build a movie. Yeah. So immediately what happens is, now it looks like you guys, now you're going to be able to pick a transition. So in this case, you're going to, Pick maybe say fade black. Okay, fade to black. And now, now uh, that's at the of, end, right? It's going to fade to black at the end of that clip. It's going to fade to black at the end of that clip. Okay. Correct. Now on the screen I'm looking at, it looks like the top of the iPad Mini is cut off a little bit. Oh. But up there is a. If we can. Yeah, I don't know if we can. Uh, oh, can you? Is that? There this, we go. You're talking about the little bar yeah. at the top with the different assets? Yeah, so that, that, the point of that is that just gives us our timeline, basically. Um, uh, and so you're actually seeing your movie being built as you shoot it. Okay? So I could hit the big red plus button and I could add another clip, for example. 
Yeah, in fact, why don't you just take a picture real quick? Hit the picture button. Okay, I'll hit the photo button. Clip, okay. And so, okay, and then just pick a Ken Burns effect, like maybe zoom in. All right, zoom in effect. And it says preparing. And yeah, it's, so it's just rendering a clip. Now, if you want to see what that looks like, just tap on that clip in the, in the timeline, and it'll play for you. Sweet. That's so awesome. And okay. then you can close that out. Close that, okay. Let's record, uh, well, go ahead and, and uh, switch cameras. So, so oh, to the, to the other, to like my front yeah, facing? All right, that's me. Yeah, so now go ahead and record another clip. Hi, Mom. <laughs> now let it be a little bit longer. Okay. We're going to let this one be maybe uh, 10 seconds, just hold. All right, now go ahead and uh, you can stop now. All right. Now I want you to preview that clip, and we're going to do something that we've just added in this version. Okay, so I, it looks like I need maybe choose no transition or something first. I would choose fade black. Okay, we'll do fade black again. Okay, there's my clip. Now I'm going to just select the clip. Yeah, and now hit the pause button. Pause. Now hit the green button. Green, okay. This one gets really fun. Ooh, look at that. Hit insert. Insert. S title slide or snapshot? Let's do a title slide. Okay. And let's just put your name in there. Okay. And then your title down below it. John P. And then subtitle. King of Mischief. How do you even spell like mischief? It. <laughs> it doesn't matter how it you spell it. It doesn't matter. Right? And I hit OK. Yeah. And now it's like, it's thinking. It's got the little wheel going along there. It's thinking, yeah. And then it's going to be done in a second here. And by the way, since we're talking about this whole rendering thing, I suppose that people on newer iOS devices benefit from the, the better Sweet. processing speed. Oh, yeah. But the older ones will still do it. Yeah, yeah. OK. I do it on an iPod Touch fourth generation. Uh, you can actually use VisiWig on an iPad 1 with iOS 4.3. <laughs> wow. Uh, Vis Vis we, we engineered VisiWig 4.0 to run an iPad 1 with iOS 4.3 all the way up through an iPhone 5 with iOS 7. That's amazing. I don't think anything else does that. I don't, I've never heard of anything. <laughs> all right, so now we've got, the, I guess we added a title uh, in there. Now go ahead and play it. Go ahead and uh, play okay, it. Okay, so I'll play it. All right, we're going along, and oh, bingo! There we go. Okay, that, I love it. Yeah, nice little quick lower thirds. You can yep. change the colors and fonts the same way you change the credits and titles. So that anyway, would be great if I was like interviewing someone or something. Exactly. Then I, 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 I can't. I might not do it while I'm while I'm interviewing, but as soon as I'm done, I just pop in here, preview it, pause it, give them a title, let it go. Exactly. Cool. And you can also now, uh, so. The other thing you can do is you can take snapshots while you're recording, and we overlay them as a, you know, sort of an angled snapshot. Oh, okay. Have people ask so that other when you saw insert and it gave you a title slide and snapshot, um, you could actually pick a photo from your camera roll and insert that over, uh, you know, right there too. So right. that's useful. In the future, we're going to add insert clip, so that'll give you your B-roll capability that that. Cool. Uh, one. Okay. All right. So anyway, so now we're let's, we got a nice little movie here. So but just close I, that. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and close that. All right. But what I want to do is um, actually let's move that back. Let's move that clip back to the beginning. So tap on it again. Okay. Pause it. Pause. And then use the arrows to move it back. So this gives you the sense of how you're shooting and editing at the same time. You know, you're you're uh, able to move your clips in the Composition, you're able to trim things. Did I lose you there? No, yeah, I'm, li I'm, I'm listening. Okay, so hit the little arrow left of the play button. Okay. Yeah, put, him, put yourself back to the beginning. I think I'm at the beginning now. Yeah, yeah it's so at the beginning. Good. Okay. And, and then also tap the scissors and let's trim this clip up a little bit. Let's trim it right to where the title slide starts. 
or just before that, you know. I mean, right before the the lower thirds comes up. Ooh. Right there. Okay. Know? Yeah. So and then go ahead and close that. Nice. Now just hit done. I can't believe how easy it is to do that. I mean, you didn't have to. You're telling me what to do, but you didn't have to be specific about it. There's two little scissors. You drag it with your finger. It just does it. Okay, that's exactly what I would expect. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. So tap, tap the done button because we're done. Okay. We built our movie. Now you're going to uh, say finish and export. Okay. Uh, at that point, you could have saved it for later to your library. But let's go ahead and um, uh, scroll across the top where it says I for music. Now, one of the things we've done in VisiWig 4.0 is we've added about 20 tracks. If you hit download more, I don't know if you're connected to the internet, but. Oh, wow. Download, we've got just some really great tracks. I want you to take a look at, you know, if you uh, go ahead and, and tap on uh, Anthem. I like Anthem a lot. Anthem, okay. There we go, Anthem. And also go ahead and grab House, H-A-U-S. House. So I'm, I'm getting these tracks right now and then they're yeah. just downloaded and then I can use them whenever I want? Now these are all instrumental. They're all original. We created these uh, with our own musicians. They are one, one, uh, one minute tracks and they loop seamlessly and perfectly so you can use them for a long period of time. Excellent. But I want you to go ahead and now that you've, they've downloaded, go ahead and tap on Anthem. Okay. okay. You may not have audio coming out. Oh, yeah, I probably do. Would I normally have, I would have audio right now? Yeah, you would be hearing that track. Okay. I, uh, let me turn it's, it up a little. It may be because when it's plugged into the... Uh, yeah, it's probably because of the way that it's plugged in. I'm not hearing it. It's sending the yeah. audio out to the TV, but... It's fine, though. Go ahead and hit next. Uh, well, hit volume. Tap volume. And this is where you'd set your relative volume of the video to the music. So let's turn the music down. Yeah. Maybe about a little bit more. A little, little louder? A little lower. Oh, a little lower. Like about one. Yeah, like, about there. Yeah. Okay. Just be a nice background. Then hit next. So easy. So intuitive. Okay. And now we want to just, now we've got some new studio intros too. So pick that one that's got the gold VC Studios. That one? Uh, yeah, pick that one. Then go ahead and give this movie a title. Let's call it Busywig 4.0 Demo. All right. Yeah, and then... Uh, I'm movie. giving it a subtitle. Yeah, go ahead and... You can give it whatever you want there. It's That's epic. all I do. <laughs> then give it a producer. You go ahead and give yourself credit. Okay. And if you tap on fonts, uh, we're going to show you here where you know the different colors and font combinations you have. There's literally you know hundreds of different combinations. Remember before when we made that little lower thirds title slide? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a way to go in and, and change this, and then it, whenever you make those title slides, it uses your last setting. So, cool. But go ahead and hit finish now. Okay, so and I can export that, it now. Uh, well, let's do this. So, or do it later because it'll take a few minutes. No, go ahead and do it now. Oh, okay. It won't take that long at all. It's uh, it's gonna just rip through this yeah it's already at 10 percent yeah now, is that because the ipad mini has a pretty good processor that is exactly why okay uh but but even on an iphone 4 it's still pretty fast it's it's a little bit slow on an ipad one obviously now people ask me how does busywig a video camera video editing app work on an ipad one and i tell them well with remote camera you can connect an ipad one to an iphone 5 you get full eight megapixels. <laughs> right. So, and also you can uh, use an iPad connection kit uh, and bring bring in clips from other cameras too, and edit those on the iPad one. So, there's like 15 or 20 million iPad ones out there, and if you ever find someone throwing one away, just go ahead and grab it because you can always use it with Visiway. That's, what That's I awesome. Say. So you could theoretically go grab like 
four or five of those old ancient iPads, and then you could <laughs> you could station. make a you could have a video production at, with Visiwig. You could have a video production facility. Yeah, you might be able to have a network, John. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're already at 90, like 95%. We're almost done with this thing. 97, here we go. Yeah, so then just, you're going to hit the uh, play button. Okay, play. And now we get That's to see our little magical video. Yeah. Oh, nice. We got a little intro. Now, it's, it's not playing the audio. Yeah, but, but it would if we weren't plugged in the way we are. Yeah. And that that's me panning the camera on my little uh, panning. But in a second, yeah, that zoom, now that is VisiWig doing the zooming, not me, because obviously the iPad doesn't zoom on its own. And that, was our, that was our photograph that we took. Yep. Exactly. And then we got our scrolling credits. Nice. Now, in, in VisiWig 4.0, we also gave you the power to, to turn off the VisiWig logo at the end if you'd like. Some people wanted to be able to do that. And it's on that titles and credits screen. You just turn that off down at the end and, you know, cool. some people want it, some people don't. So. Okay. So that was a great overview of how you can get started and just use this as a video camera. We've been able to use it that way since day one, but... Now I'm anxious to get to the super, super new special part where I believe you also have an iPad and you are where today? Uh, I'm in uh, Ponce, Puerto Rico. Okay, you're in Puerto Rico. I'm yeah. in Dallas, but I'm going to be able to grab clips off of your video. Yeah, you're going to be able to actually connect uh, to my remote camera and... Uh, and not only that, but you're going to be able to do live switching while you're recording between your camera and my camera. Okay, now, in order for us to demonstrate Worldwide Remote Camera, you're going to actually have to log in to the Worldwide Remote Camera service. Now, right now, this is in a limited uh, beta for the, I think it's like the next 30 days. And so we're um, inviting people to be able to have their own username and password to be able to participate in this. Uh, we haven't quite determined what the pricing is going to be because we're, we're trying to get an understanding of the bandwidth and what the server costs and bandwidth are going to be required after customers start using it. Uh, but they can send an email to invite at busywig.com if they want to be considered. So go ahead and log in to Worldwide Remote Camera. Okay. And, uh, so I click on the little globe uh, icon yeah, up here. Globe button. All right. Log in. Yep. And my, oh, I'm, my super secret login is already in here. Logged in successfully. Okay. Okay. Now, you want to hit, now, now I want you to tap the plus button. Okay. Now, when you get that plus button, we'll stop here for just a second. So that plus button is sort of universal ad media. You can add title slides with that button, load clips from your camera roll. We even have now we have a load multi clip. So we let you load up to 30 clips or photos at the same time. So if you've got a bunch of clips and photos you shot with your native camera, and you just want to load all those in. We also let you uh, load them in the order you tap them. So we put a little number there like one, two, three, four through 30. Uh, but right now we're going to access the uh, Worldwide Remote Camera or the multi-camera. So tap multi-camera. Okay, multi-camera. Now this is the same way you would uh, enter the interface for Wi-Fi multi-camera. Right, just if you're using it with your own devices. Um, but right now, you've signed in, and it's going to tell you, "Hey, there's somebody," which is me. Now, so hit, you know, so select me there. This is so exciting. And uh, well, this is the first time we've ever shown this, as, as far as I know. <laughs> and then just go ahead, and you're going to connect to me. Okay, just hit like done. Done. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I see another little Wi-Fi thing. Oh, that's you. That's me. That so, is awesome. Now, if you double tap me, I, I become active. Okay, now you actually just did a live switch there. All right. Now double tap yourself again. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tap... You're going to tap the record button, but you need to be ready to do some switching back and forth. Because okay. Because that should be our... Editor too. Okay. 
I want to make sure we don't have to do this later again, right? All right, yep. So, so now let's keep this pretty short because uh, I think I'm only on 4G right now. But we'll, you know, record for about 15 seconds, I guess. Okay. Go ahead and hit the record button when you're ready. And uh, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna like, I can ask you a question and then you can like, I can perfect. switch to you and you can respond, kind of thing. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Hey, Michael, it's John P. How are you doing way down there in Puerto Rico? Oh, I've got my teal green uh, turquoise shirt on to celebrate the iPhone 5C. I don't know about you. Excellent. Yes, I don't think I'm going to go for the iPhone 5C. I'm more of a gold blingy man, so I'll go with the 5S. Well, it was great talking to you. I do want that sapphire crystal fingerprint sensor. Exactly. All right, we're wrapping up this interview and we're done. Okay, player is you know, uploading. Right now, right now, my device says uploading file. Okay. Oh, yeah. so what I was seeing was I was seeing a really low kind of quality version of yours, but now I'm getting the original. Yeah, you're going to get the full original. That's the beauty of the Worldwide Remote Camera. Um, you know, you can't really over any kind of network, get a really high quality video recording real time. Yeah. Even, even Wi-Fi, uh, especially 4G, right? So yeah. now if, if nobody's moving, then impact compression kicks in. It's really good. If everybody sits still like this, you know, and they just talk with their lips, then yeah. it's decent. But if they're moving around, it gets pretty bad. It gets pretty choppy. So the whole point of remote camera, even on a local basis, is we use a low-res proxy uh, while you're previewing, because that's really all you need to do your switching. And then when you're done, we, re we uh, send the full high-res version from each device. We mash it together and create what's called a multi-clip. And we give you the full power to not only edit that in real time, but then you can edit the switching later. So what's happening right now in this particular case, if we were on local Wi-Fi, my, my device would be sending the clip to your device. Yep. What's happening right now is my device is sending the clip to my servers, or our servers, and our servers are going to send that clip to your device. Because and I was going to ask you, you know, I was going to ask, let's say that I had five different people in five places in the world, and I was switching between them all, and then, you know, we hit done. Now I have to receive on this end five, let's say everybody has basically equal and decent bandwidth. But on my end, I... Yeah. There's only one. I can't receive all five at the same time. So you're kind of buffering them in the middle, if you will? Well, so, you know, typically with internet, the download speeds are a lot faster, right? I mean, well, that's true. People's, yeah. Uh, down, so, so you don't notice it as much. The download's pretty fast. What, what, what seems to be a little bit slower is the upload from each person's device, um, depending on the, the bandwidth they have. But again, I mean, we're in the emphases of this. You know, things are going to get faster. The cellular networks are getting faster. People's internet connections are getting faster. The phones are getting faster. Everything's getting faster. So uh, this is definitely cutting edge, bleeding edge technology, this worldwide remote camera. Uh, and it's fun to play with now. But you watch what's going to happen over the next six months, year, year and a half. As, as everything gets faster, this is just going to be... Plus, we're refining this, right? We're adding features. We're, we're going to make it better, faster, higher quality. Well, it's already um, awesome, and it's just we're doing it for the first time. So I'm, I'm already impressed. Yeah. Now, on my uh, end, so I just got a window, transfer progress, and it said like 1 slash 0 complete or something, and now it says generating multi-clip. Yeah. So is this where it's kind of so now it's actually transcoding? Basically, combining my clip with your clip, it's taking the switching instructions that you were giving it while you were recording, and it's creating an editable multi-camera clip. Um, so you should be able to see that in just a minute here. And is there a limit to how many different uh, worldwide connections I can make at one time? Uh, right now we limit it to 16, but that's that's an arbitrary limit. We we limit it to try and limit, you know, crashes. Yeah. Uh, I've, never, I've never been able to get 16 people to 
connect together. So <laughs> we could. I didn't finish the multiplayer. I'm pretty sure it did. It, it finished. Finish yeah, it finished doing what it was doing. But I'm pretty sure, by the yes, way, that no, we can get 16 of our close friends to try it out just for grins. Yeah, we, we're definitely going to get a lot of people to try this out. I, I think at some point we could have 100,000 people logged into a World Wide Remote Camera at the same time. And when that becomes really exciting is when there's some big major event going on in some part of the, part of the world. Yeah. And, and we need to be able to have quick access to 100 camera people on the ground. Um, that's... You know, news gathering, that's going to get exciting. Um, social events, world events. Be amazing. Okay, so now up in your timeline, it should have added another clip up to your timeline. Didn't it? Uh, let's see. In the timeline at the yeah, top? Yeah, so then let's, let's, let's close out of remote camera. Tap that little X button on the slider you were using to do switching. Well, now tap on that clip up there. Oh, the t Okay. Oh, don't tell me that is our completed clip. Oh my God, that is awesome. And look how smooth and clear yours is. It's perfect. It's, it's your quality from your phone. That is amazing. Can you believe that, Dave? That's awesome. Just, we, we probably spend, we probably spend $50,000 to do the exact same thing with the equipment now, we use. Now go ahead and pause this and tap the NDLS. A little square. Okay. So edit switching screen. No way. Now, I don't, I'm not, I mean, you did a good job of switching, John, but you were a little bit distracted. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and re-switch this. Uh, now, you just double tap those little thumbnails. You're going to hit play all. And as it's playing, you're going to double tap those little thumbnails. And uh, now you may not have audio at this point coming out, so it might be hard to hear what's going on, but I think you'll have to wing it. So Wait, hit play all. you're saying I can hit that play all button and then I can now, right now, I can just tap back and forth between you and me, and I, I am re-switching it. Yeah, double tapping, actually. Oh, double tap between yeah. you and me, and I'm re-switching it. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to play. All right, so here I'm talking initially, and then I introduced you. Okay, I double tap. Oh, and I see it says active, and it's yeah. switched to you. Yep. Yeah. And you're talking... Go ahead and cut back to you. It's fine. And back to me. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I, it's harder to tell when you're not, when you can't hear it. Now cut back to me. Oh, that is so freaking awesome. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty fun. Now cut back to you at the end. All right. Now we're done, right? Right. Uh, now you'd think we were done. You'd think this was it. But in Visiwig 4.0, we added yet another amazing feature. I just can't get beside myself. Uh, hit the little plus button on the timeline there. Okay, plus. Create a new clip. Record with AV preview, record with video preview, record with audio preview, record new. Yeah, so now we let you add a clip to a multi-camera session. Now, let's say you forgot to include someone in on this deal. Maybe you just want to get the reaction of, of uh, someone else there in the studio. And he wasn't there when we recorded this. So we give you a way to add another clip, uh, either with an audio preview so you can hear what's happening, or just a video preview of, of the uh, existing clip, or with both, uh, or just no preview at all. Once you Now, what happens is go ahead and just say I'm going to record with uh, video preview. Okay, record with video preview. And I want you to just uh, kind of frame yourself a little different so it's clear that this is a different clip. Okay? Yeah, over to the side, like, right? Yep. And then they hit record, and I just want you to do some crazy faces. Just like almost making fun of yourself. It's, go ahead. It's giving me a three, two, one countdown. Yep. Perfect. Now let it keep going. Oh, okay. It's got to be the same length as our original. Keep making more faces. Okay. Here comes Dave Curley. <laughs> the him on the action. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Nice. Okay. Oh, so I'm seeing the other video going on in the corner. Yeah. While I'm doing this. Yeah. And okay. so you, 
and so you can basically make a like they do in Hollywood, right? They they shoot the same scene twice. I now understand what you're saying. That's why it had to be the same length. So you're saying now I can go in and no, no. I can re I can re switch it between yeah. all three of these. Yes, now hit play all and that go is, ahead and do it. Have fun. That is ridiculous. And it's it's kind of like you could do it like talk show style where people are um, <laughs> where where it's like you know five people switching back and forth or CNN style. Well, sometimes what I'll do is I'll is I'll take five videos of myself with the same camera from different angles. Yeah. And I'll just lip sync whatever I was saying, and then it looks like I had a five camera shoot. So we brought multi camera to people who only have one camera. <laughs> Right. If you, only have, if you only have one iPhone or only one iPod Touch or only one iPad, you couldn't make a multi-camera clip before now. And now, and now you can. So it's, it's an exciting change. Imagine this for music videos, right? This is how music videos are made. Yeah. You, you shoot a three-minute song with one camera. Then you take everybody outside and have them play the same you know, song again. And at the end, you end up with about 10 three-minute clips. Yeah. An editor goes through and switches those. Well, now you can do a full-blown music video with multi-camera in VisiWig 4.0. There's That's anything else awesome. I'm aware of on any device that lets you do that. That's so really easily. cool. All right, so, so I'm going to hit save. Yeah, go ahead and hit save, and that's going to save your new switching. And then you're going to... Now, the other thing I want to point out here, though, here too, is this VisiWig 4.0 is bulletproof. I mean... We have, over the last eight months, we have fixed something like 1,700 bugs wow. and crashes. You wouldn't believe all the little, you know, if, if someone was on an iPhone 4 with iOS 5 and they, and they imported a 1920-1080 clip, it would crash. Or I mean, there was literally hundreds of different scenarios and variations, and I can't get it to crash anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, look at everything we just did, and it has not had any issue at all. It is bulletproof. So yeah, that's go, awesome. Hit done, hit done or back. Okay, I'll hit back. Yeah, and then, then we're going to just hit play on that clip in the timeline. And, of course, here we don't have the audio, but you're going to kind of see it. Yeah. And now it's going to do all my crazy switching back and forth. There's me laughing at myself. And you you're see chattering. How, you, you see how it... Seems like that clip was shot at the same time as the other one. It, yeah. It's, it's a trick. It's the trick they use in Hollywood, right? I mean, they, they just keep moving the camera and shooting the same scene over again. That is amazing. Sense of depth. Okay, Michael, I know that is all really cool stuff, but you guys are complete mad scientists, and I hear rumors that you've got some other really crazy things in the works. Can you, can you give us a little, little peek at it? I, absolutely. So, you know, right now you can connect up to 16 iOS devices in VisiWig 14, uh, 4.0. And we wanted to be able to bring in, what, what, there's like a billion Android phones now? I don't even know. Half a, half a billion? A lot. We wanted, to let those, we wanted to let those devices act as remote cameras as well, especially some of the exciting new things from Samsung, like the Samsung Galaxy camera and the Samsung Galaxy S4, S3. Uh, so we're, we're creating um, apps, basically, that give us that control. Um, so you're saying we're going to be able to use, like, a Galaxy camera or any other Android device as one of the cameras in the system here that we can switch to? Yeah, so, like, here's, a, here's my Droid X. This is old, right? It's running Android uh, 2.1, I think. Yeah. And, um, and so there's the app running on it. And when I, when I launch that, it does, you know, obviously it doesn't give me the full VisiWig uh, oh, app, but it just gives the, the player. Right? Yeah, well, that's awesome. So, we, so then when we ask people, hey, if you're at such and such place, you know, get the app and turn on your camera and we might switch to it, then uh, anybody can do it regardless of platform. Yes, and, and people that have, their, uh, have VisiWig on their iPad, there's a lot of people with iPads that use an Android as, as their main phone. So those people will now be able to use their Android phone as a remote camera for their iPad. 
And so we're really excited about that. That's we're hoping to submit that to the Android app stores in the next few weeks here. Very cool. Any See other here. any other big uh, you know super secret projects going on? Yes. Yeah, so the other really exciting thing we've been uh, you're familiar with the double robotics double. Right? Absolutely, we have one, and Callie loves it. Okay, so so this is a telepresence robot, and you know the typical use case of it is sort of remote controlled chat, right? I yeah. mean, it's uh, basically you can put yourself in another office somewhere around the world. So it's a great product. Um, it's great if you want to be there, basically, and you can control uh, this remote robot. It's like a Segway, and you can control that in someone else's office, and it's got your face on it with the iPad, and then you kind of uh, remotely can control moving that around. You can. It's got this cool mirror thing on the bottom, and so if you use the back camera, it shows you the ground and you can navigate around obstacles. And this, the moment I got one, I said this would make a great, you know, automated dolly platform <laughs> for, a, for a camera, you know, for independent filmmakers, for videographers, YouTube videographers, even amateur filmmakers that just want to do something really cool. Um, and, and I started thinking, well, how could we use this as a remote camera? We would need to be able to somehow control it. Uh, we would need to be able to control it within VisiWig, and so we uh, so we started asking uh, the people at Double Robotics, "Hey, can, do you have some sort of API or SDK for this?" Uh, now, just uh, day before yesterday, I got an email out of the blue from them saying, "Hey, this is just for you," nice. and uh, I asked them if it was my birthday, and they said, "Yeah, it's your birthday." <laughs> and so, so we've been just cranking on this, hacking away on this, trying to make it work with VisiWig. For the last two days, uh, we've had it working, then it wasn't working. We've had it working again, then it wasn't working. I believe it's working right now, and uh, we're gonna. We're certainly gonna. Wait, is that a double behind you? Yeah, let, let me see if I. Uh, so you're telling me that you're going to control the double with the VisiWig app? I'm actually doing that right now. You're gonna see the double rising up. I just tapped the raise pull button. Wow! I'm connected, wow. I'm connected to that camera. And uh, now what I've done is I've put an iPhone 5 on the double in the little holder where the, where the iPad would go because I just want the best quality camera. And so here with my, with my uh, VisiWig interface, I basically still can connect to multiple other cameras. Uh, but when I, when I choose the one that's connected to the double, uh, I can tap these buttons here, move it forward or backward or up or down, like you see here, turn it left or right. So this is going to be really exciting. Now, what's, what's really great about this, uh, you even, you've mentioned this, I think, in the past, but right now you can't control multiple doubles with the same device. Uh, you have to log in, log out. Yeah, yeah. Because the device itself is, the remote camera itself is paired to the double over Bluetooth, we could have five or six of these doubles all paired to, the, all, all paired to their own devices and then on our stage, all we have to do is double tap the appropriate device, and then we gain full control of that double. That is awesome. And, and consequently, it's camera. So what we're working on right now, we think what, you know, what we think is going to be the best use case is to allow you to set mark points, like they, they say in, in filmmaking, you know, set marks, basically. So utilizing the script, you know, if, if the script calls for a nice, smooth dolly shot, uh, that slightly moves up over time, then we'll, we'll let you basically set a zero point and then use the device to, to move it to that and then lock that and, and essentially record that and then be able to go back and forth between those, those two points or other points. That's awesome. This way, you know, I could quickly switch between uh, double one, double two, double three, and instead of trying to drive these doubles around, turn them and make them go up and down, I mean, that would be pretty laborious. Um, if you get this set up ahead of time, all you're going to do is hit one button and you've got beautiful choreographed multiple doubles, remote camera live switching recording. I, I don't know what else you can ask for, John. Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously, that's like, that's like being able to have uh, five different people with you and you know, but it's really only one controlling what it would take five people to do. It's kind of like using motion control. Uh, or are are you are you going to be able to use motion control to also uh, 
keep those things focused and stuff like that as well. Well, one of the, yeah, one of the things we want to be able to do is um, uh, use the use the compass and some of the other tools that are in an iPhone. You know, it's got compass accelerometer, so we want to be able to allow you to set sort of a a lock point, and then have the double just move around that. You know, it would it would move around that, and and we're also working with um, the motor. Uh, by Galileo, uh, Gal the, the, Gal the motor Galileo, I guess it's called, right? That yeah, name? that can uh, move the the iPhone like up and down, tilt control and swivel control. Yeah, so so basically, this is the this is really a cool. I mean, what a great product! Um, uh, just an amazing. I believe this was a Kickstarter project. Yeah, it right? was. Uh, amazing engineering. Love this thing. Okay, and, and it basically gives you, um, you know, tilt this way and that way, right? So that you can make your phone go this way and that way. You know, considering considering that the uh, double, the, the iPad holder kind of bolts onto the top of the double, it would not be hard to disconnect that and then make some kind of a little custom mount that you could stick one of those up there with the phone. Well, that's what I'm trying to convince those guys to do because you've got to... A tripod mount on the bottom of the Galileo. Yeah. What I want is for for a, for a custom mount that would go on top of the double kickstand, and uh, and then our software would let you basically uh, pan around, tilt up and down, move back and forth, drive side to side, and go up and down. I mean, I don't even think there aren't too many really high end television studio robotic dollies that do all that. Yeah, I don't think so. What, what, what is the double cost? It's like uh, 2500. 2500 and the and the and this device is 200 maybe. And Visiwig is how much? And the what? Visiwig? It's 1999. <laughs> 20 bucks. Ridiculous. Yeah, so so for for under $3000, well under $3000 cuz the deal that we're giving you. Yeah. Uh, you would have, you know, this this full robotic Dolly situation, and, and we're really on our way towards making that happen. We've got we've got control of both devices, um, and again, you know, we're not going to have you try to while you're filming try to drive these things around and rotate and. Pan. Yeah, you just set up the pre-programmed motions and then hit the button and bingo. Hit the button and you get a nice smooth, de uh, you know, camera dolly move from each of your cameras, and uh, we think that's going to be. Really exciting. So. That is cool. Okay, there's one last little thing that I want to ask you about before we wrap it up. All right. We are talking about doing a lot of editing and stuff inside the iPad or the iPhone, which works great. But what if I wanted to take my assets and move them, you know, from the field, like into the office and do some editing on Final Cut or, you know, a real heavy duty uh, uh, application like that. Can we do that? Well, you and me both want to do that, right? I've been a Final Cut user for a long time, a Premiere user for a long time, um, longer than I want to say. But um, I want to be able to bring my VisiWig sessions right into Final Cut Pro Premiere. Fortunately, there are uh, a couple of interchange formats. One is more of a rich format. It has, you know, keeps track of more things. And then there's a basic format, which is EDL, Edit Decision List. And the way VisiWig was built was with that in mind, because that was ultimately my goal. So the first step we took towards doing that was allowing, was we, we uh, package up all the clips that are in your movie, your session, all the individual clips, uh, all the decisions about the trim in and out points and all the decisions you made about dissolves or other transitions, the title slides and things. And we package that all up and we let you, uh, now as a VisiWig 4.0, we let you upload that to Dropbox or onto your computer via iTunes sharing, and then transfer that to some other device. So I can at uh, least get all my Dropbox. raw files and, and take the raw files into the editor. Well, and you also get a, a package that will ultimately, we're going to make that work with Premiere and Final Cut, that when you bring all those raw files down from Dropbox into another device, you're going to have all your edits and all your, your transitions already selected, all your in and out points. That would be so, awesome. Yeah, so what we're working on right now, we hope to have it ready you know, fairly soon, is uh, where you're going to be able to also include in that package an edit decision list file. 
And that'll give you a tremendous amount of power because now once you use Dropbox or iTunes Style Sharing, someone else will be able to pull that down, open the project up in uh, Final Cut or Premiere or Avid, and, and have all the edit points in place. The beauty is that then they'll be able to replace uh, those, maybe in some cases those will be proxy clips with other higher resolution clips that they might have shot with uh, other types of cameras. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that is just a ton of updates. I mean, I don't know how you guys cram so much in there or how you have so many things going on at once, but it looks great. You guys, you can pick up VisiWig for 20 bucks on the App Store. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You can't get Final Cut for that. You can't even get like a, an add-on for Final Cut for 20 bucks. And this is an entire solution for you. So thanks for joining us, Michael. I appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. Thanks as always. Okay. How about a thumbs up on YouTube? Go to youtube.com forward slash TV, and we will see you next time.